After faking his death during his last adventures, former hitman Arthur is living a peaceful life in Rio de Janeiro under a fake identity. One afternoon while he's enjoying his time at a nice restaurant, Arthur is approached by Renee, who is proof of who he really is. She represents a powerful man that wants to hire Arthur to kill three enemies and make it look like an accident. If he turns the offer down, her boss will let criminals know Arthur's alive. Arthur pretends he needs to make a call and takes out his phone, but actually he uses it to take a picture of Renee. She immediately takes out her gun and Arthur responds by pushing the table against her, turning down the offer. All the henchmen Renee brought attack Arthur, and he fights them all using his self-defense skills and any object he can find in the restaurant, including the grill itself. Then Arthur jumps on the roof of a passing sky tram to get away, but Renee and her men board the same tram and try to shoot Arthur from inside. Renee also tries to climb up to him, so Arthur decides to jump on the back of a hand glider to escape successfully. In the evening, Arthur makes it back to the boat he lives in and finds some suspicious men checking it out. Using a remote control he activates the bombs he installed in case of emergencies and makes the boat explode, killing those guys. Afterward he goes to an old container where he's hidden all his tools and burns his old passport to replace it with a new identity. Sometime later, Arthur moves to Thailand, where his old friend May gives him back his old hut. Under the hut floor, Arthur has hidden more weapons and tools, so he immediately begins working on researching Renee. He discovers she works for Crane, a dangerous criminal he's very familiar with. The next day, a woman named Gina comes to May's place to ask for some first aid supplies. May notices there are some bruises on her, but Gina turns down any extra help. When night falls May hears screaming coming from one of the boats and notices Gina is being violently mistreated by a man called Frank. May asks Arthur for help and while he doesn't want to go, he knows he owes it to May. When he makes it to the boat, Arthur tries to ask for Gina nicely, but Frank attacks him. Arthur immediately defends himself and when Frank falls, he accidentally hits his head and dies. When Gina sees the body, she passes out, and May approaches the boat too to bring her to the shore. Meanwhile Arthur looks around and finds a gun, Gina's passport, and a phone with his own picture. Then Arthur sets the boat on fire. When Arthur returns to the hut, he wakes Gina up and demands to know if she works for Crane while pointing a gun at her. Gina tries to disarm him, but Arthur easily overpowers her and makes her talk. Crane did send Gina, but she doesn't actually work for him, Crane is blackmailing her into doing this. She was supposed to play an innocent victim to get Arthur's attention, and Frank got a little too much into his role. The plan was to get close to Arthur and then call Crane, but Arthur forbids her from doing so, he'll decide when these guys get to come. The next day, Arthur discovers Gina used to be part of a humanitarian group that offered assistance in Cambodia. Arthur asks Gina what Crane has on her, and Gina explains she ran a shelter for victims of human trafficking. A few weeks ago, a staff member disappeared, and two days later her body was left at her door. Crane sent a henchman that would kill the kids if Gina didn't accept to do this mission for him. Later, Arthur notices a boat nearby with men looking at the shore. They probably were sent by Crane, so Arthur walks around hand in hand with Gina to make them think her mission is going well. May notices this and puts them together through some old Thai traditions at the party she's throwing, and Arthur and Gina end up having lots of fun together. In the evening, Gina apologizes to Arthur for getting him into this mess. Arthur explains he understands because he was an orphan too. He was sold to a gangster that trained child soldiers, and Crane was there too. While Arthur escaped, Crane didn't, and Arthur thinks they blamed Crane for it and now he wants revenge. Then Gina and Arthur kiss and spend the night together. Afterward, Arthur promises Gina he's been arranging everything for her to escape without endangering the kids. He won't make the kills Crane wants him to, he'll only kill Crane himself. Arthur also gifts Gina his father's watch, the only memory he has of the man. The next morning, a group of policemen arrives at the beach, but Gina recognizes one of them as Crane's man. Arthur begins fighting them off, but while he's busy, the men kidnap Gina, so Arthur has no choice but to accept a meeting with Crane. Moments later, Crane tells Arthur that if he wants Gina back, he'll have to do three kills for him and make them look like an accident. The first one is Krill, the highest profile arms dealer in Africa who is currently in a Malaysian prison. Crane also gives him a pill he must swallow after the kill for them to find him. While Arthur works, Gina is kept hidden in one of Crane's many boats. Arthur travels to Malaysia and begins researching the prison, which is on top of cliffs and surrounded by shark-infested waters, so it's impossible to sneak in. With a plan in mind, Arthur buys some powerful explosives that he disguises as chewing hum, some shark repellent that he puts in a skin cream tin, and hides the capsule inside a cigarette. Lastly, he makes a fake ID and disguises himself as an infamous wanted criminal. As soon as Arthur begins walking the Malaysian streets, he gets recognized and arrested. In prison, the reception guard doesn't notice anything weird about his items and allows them to keep them. The first few days, Arthur takes it easy and talks to other prisoners to learn more about his target. Krill has his men following him at all times because lots of people want to kill him. Even if he's locked up, Krill manages all his business from here and is the real boss of the place. Arthur watches a knife exchange hands between two prisoners, and during lunchtime, he bumps against them on purpose to discreetly steal that knife. Later, 
One of Krill's former men tries to kill Krill for revenge, but Arthur's cuts in and kills him with a knife. Krill is very impressed and invites Arthur to have dinner with him, Arthur only accepts if Krill is willing to leave his men outside. Surprisingly Krill accepts his terms and in the evening, Arthur is taken from his cell to meet Krill at his private hut. Krill tries to offer Arthur a job, but as soon as he turns around, Arthur jumps on him and kills him by putting pressure on his neck. Then he mixes the snake venom Krill used for his rituals with his actual drink to make it look like Krill ended things for himself. The guards outside are getting suspicious, but Arthur puts the body in a praying position so the guards think the silence is for the sake of religion. Afterward, Arthur puts the explosive gum on a prison wall to make a hole. Then he swallows the pill, covers himself with the shark repellent, and jumps into the water before the cops can catch him. Crane's men are waiting for him in a fishing boat, and Arthur gets to escape safely. Crane makes a video call to prove Gina is fine and gives Arthur his second target, Adrian Cook, a human trafficker that lives in Australia. Some days later, Arthur is investigating his target. He learns that Cook's penthouse suite is impenetrable, but he also has a cantilever pool that overhangs above the streets. Arthur hires a helicopter to study the building from afar, then he pretends to be interested in one of the apartments near Cook's. While the realtor shows him around, Arthur calls her phone to distract her, and he takes pictures of the apartment key so he can make a duplicate. Lastly he uses dangerous chemicals to create a small but potent explosive that can shatter glass and make it look like it broke from pressure. A few days later, Arthur disguises himself as a technician to enter the building without being noticed, then he uses the duplicate key to get inside the apartment. Using advanced equipment, Arthur leaves through the window and climbs up the building until he reaches the pool, where he makes a small hole to insert his special explosive. Cook is currently swimming and can see Arthur, but before he can call the guards, the glass starts to crack. Arthur jumps away and slides down the building to return to the apartment while the swimming pool breaks and Cook falls to his death. Crane sees Cook's death on the news and orders his men to get things ready for the next video call. Gina notices they make her sit near a window that happens to show the boat's hull number, so she moves the camera to put the window on the frame. When the call starts, Gina raises her hand to show Arthur the watch as a way to make him look at the number. As soon as the henchman notices he ends the call, but Arthur manages to get the number and uses it to find the location of the boat. Later, Arthur makes a helicopter follow Crane's boat, and he jumps into the water with a bag full of special equipment. After hiding the bag under the boat, Arthur sneaks aboard and begins killing every man he comes across. Unfortunately he's seen and Arthur finds himself in a hand-to-hand -hand fight against a bunch of thugs while Gina is taken out of the room. She tries to defend herself but her basic skills aren't enough and she's put in a helicopter. Arthur jumps on one of the guards and takes his grenade to knock out the thugs that are after him, using the guy as a shield at the same time. Sadly more men arrive and tase him to capture him. Moments later, Gina and Arthur are taken to another boat, where Crane confesses he knew Arthur would try this because he can't help himself, but he still has to do the third kill. After Crane leaves, Arthur beats up the guards instead of letting them take him away properly. Then he jumps into the water where he retrieves his equipment, which includes an oxygen tank and a small engine that allows him to escape safely. A few days later, Arthur is in Bulgaria, where he gets the details of the last kill, Max Adams, an American arms dealer. Arthur begins doing his research and realizes that Adams has Max security fortress where he keeps submarines with intercontinental ballistic missiles. He also realizes that these kills are Crane's attempt at getting rid of all his competition in arm dealing, which makes him have second thoughts. Sometime later, Arthur shoots at one of Adam's guards from afar, then he sneaks onto the roof of a hospital to hide in the emergency helicopter. The pilot flies to Adam's fortress to check on the fallen soldier, and while everyone is distracted, Arthur gets to enter the building. Inside, he installs a jammer to ruin the security cameras, then begins taking down any guard he sees. Soon the building is put under alert and the henchmen escort Adams to his panic room, Arthur delays them by making the elevator malfunction. By the time Adams makes it to his room, Arthur is already there waiting for him. However Arthur doesn't shoot, instead he offers Adams to work together to bring down Crane. Arthur's plan begins with Adams faking his own death. Sometime later, Adams is checking his submarines and when he walks on a bridge, a bomb explodes. Arthur is ready underwater and shares an oxygen tank with Adams to get him away to a beach. Crane sees the explosion on TV where the news announced Adams was buried in the water under a bunch of debris. At that moment Arthur calls him to inform him of the third kill, but Crane won't believe him until he sees the body. Arthur promises the body can be found underwater, so after hanging up, Crane sends his men to find Adams' body and kill Arthur. Meanwhile Arthur returns to the submarine pen and prepares a bunch of traps in advance. When Crane's henchmen arrive, one by one they fall into the traps and die, and those who don't are killed by Arthur from the shadows. Crane realizes Arthur is coming for him next and puts Gina outside his bait. Arthur travels underwater and reaches the boat to immediately begin killing every guard on sight. Crane sees him on the security footage and orders his men to bring Gina back inside right before Arthur destroys the cameras. Gina tries to fight the guard that grabbed her and ends up with a wound on her stomach, then the guard pushes her into the jacuzzi for Crane to grab her next. While Arthur continues to fight the guards, Crane takes Gina inside and activates an explosive hidden in the boat. 
Then he leaves to try to escape in his rescue boat. Just a second later Arthur finds Gina and learns about the bomb, so Arthur puts Gina in an emergency release pod and sends her away. Afterward Arthur goes after Crane, killing the last few guards before a hand-to-hand -hand fight ensues. Crane puts his hands on the anchor chain and uses it to capture Arthur by his leg, but Arthur takes advantage of its length and uses it to tie Crane to the boat. Crane laughs because Arthur took too long and he'll die too, but Arthur doesn't look too worried and he runs inside right before the bomb explodes. Gina watches the boat blow into pieces and catch on fire, and cries for Arthur's death. At least the explosion gave away their position and she's rescued by the Coast Guard. Adams also watches from the shore and thinks there's something weird about the boat pieces that are being brought from the sea, he also notices a security camera nearby. Some weeks later, Gina is back in Cambodia with the kids, and she writes to May to thank her for her donation of a water filter. One afternoon while she's busy teaching, she's shocked to discover Arthur is alive and has come to see her. Meanwhile Adams researches Crane's boat and learns this model has something called a diving bell, which contains trapped air to allow divers to breathe underwater. With a theory in mind, Adams checked the security footage and confirms Arthur escaped by hiding in the diving bell. Impressed by this plan, Adams deletes the footage to protect Arthur's future. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.